Notion has just improved their formulas big time. They call it Formulas 2.0, and in this video, I'm gonna show you first what's changed, and then how I'm using it for my business to give you a little bit of an idea how you can use it yourself. Let's get into it. The first and what for me is the biggest change about is that now Notion Formulas can output rich content. What do I mean by this? We are no longer just outputting text, numbers, or a checkbox, a boolean. We can now output pages. Yes, you've heard. Right. If you see here, this is a formula that I'm gonna dive into it a little bit later. And all of these are pages within the formula that if I just click on it, I go to the actual page. Another thing that's changed, now formulas can be much more readable. I don't know if you remember with all, some very long formulas that you need to squint your eyes to really see what was going on there, like so many parentheses, it was impossible to debug. I was actually using a different editor because I was getting crazy. But now it is so much easier. Why? Let me show you. Because now the formula editor really behaves as a real code editor. And we can have line breaks that we can create with shift enter and it doesn't affect the formula at all. We can add comments. So the comments have to be within these two symbols, the forward slash star, star forward slash. Even the comments can be multi-line until we close it. And what's also even cooler is that now we can use indentation on text in the formula. So if I just select all of these and press the tab, this gets indented and it can be indented forever. Like this, we can make everything so much more readable. Another big change is what they call the dot notation. So if before we had a formula like this, some, and then within the formula, we have the arguments of the formula. I mean, if you wanna know which are the arguments, you can just click there and see them there. And this will return six. So this is the sum of these three. But now with dot notation, we can write the same formula in a different way. We can first write the argument and then the function that we want to apply to this argument. For such a simple example, doesn't really make sense. But once we get to the more complex formula that I have below, you will see how this is more helpful than not. And since I have understood how this works, because it took me a little bit, this is the only notation that I use right now. It is so much more comprehensible and we will see why in a minute. Another change that I also love. You remember when you had a mistake in a formula that you were writing and you didn't really know where the mistake was. So <laughs> all you got was the error is in character 1273. <laughs> Who knows where that is? So now we have a proper error feedback. Now we have the error underlined by this red line. So we can actually know that the error is there. And it also explains you what's going on. Okay, but now we have the underline. So this makes debugging formulas, more complicated formulas, so much easier again. Now, some things to also take into account. If we modify what is inside of a formula, let's say I had a four here, the result is just gonna be updated in here, but not here. If we want it to be really updated in all the database, we have to click on done or command enter. Then it updates. This another small change. Apart from all these changes, Notion has also been working very hard because we've been working with them for over a month in creating new functions for the formulas. Now I'm gonna show you the ones that I've been using a lot and which I think are the most helpful, but I would recommend you to just open a formula property, click on it and just scroll down to see everything that they have. So now let me put you what I think is one of the best examples that I can put to show you all the new functions that exist, the ones that I think are most helpful in everything that I've been talking about. So let's say that we have a project that is linked to all these tasks. And what we want is to have like a mini dashboard on how this project is doing. So how the hell I'm doing this. Let's open the formula and let's go step by step, understanding what it's doing. So here with comments, I'm saying that this is part of the not started piece and this is part of the in progress piece. So on the first part, we have the, the title and there is something new here. We can style text. 
and this is done with this style function. You see, I'm using here a dot notation, and this is a string of text that if I add this dot style, I can actually style it. You can see here everything that is available for styling. And I have decided to make it bold and to turn it red like this is visible. And then what am I doing? I'm using a new function, which is the filter. The way that this is working is I'm taking the tasks relational property from here and with the dot notation, I'm filtering it. If we go to the filter, we can see that after the first argument, which in our case is the tasks, because we are using the dot notation, we need to reference this argument with the word current. And what I want to filter is the status that is not started. Because what I'm getting at is to, to count how many not started tasks are there. In this case, three. So I'm filtering all the tasks that have the status not started and then I'm calculating the length of this array, okay? Because all of this is going to return an array of tasks. An array is basically a list. And I'm, with this formula, I'm counting the length of the text or list value, okay? So this is the three, and then I'm doing the same for all tasks. There is no filter here, so here I'm just counting all tasks, which in this case is five. We can see the five over here. Now, how am I creating this beautiful list of not started tasks? Here in the new formulas, we can also add these characters and these characters to create a break line, which is this one, new line, or a tabulation, which is this one over here. So this break line corresponds to this break line over here. So these two dots, we are breaking the line and create a new one. And then, we are building this list of tasks. How we are doing it? This first arrow is this first arrow. And then the same as before, tasks, filter, the current status is not started. I'm sorting it alphabetically. This is not really necessary. But now probably you are starting to see why am I using the dot notation? Because it is so much easier to just add functions on top of each other. And then you don't, you don't have to keep track of all the parentheses that you've opened because then you have to close them and everything becomes so much harder to read. To me, it's so much easier to say, okay, I have the tasks. I wanna filter them by the status. I wanna then solve them and I want to then join them. Okay, it is so much easier to, to read as well. So yes, I'm sorting them alphabetically. And then what I'm doing is I am adding in between each task, this is what the join function is doing. Is doing. We get a list, which is our our tasks filtered, and I'm joining them with whatever I'm writing inside of the join function, which in my case is a new line, a tab, and an arrow. So this is from here. It will be a new line, a tab, and the arrow and then I'm gonna write the next task, and then I join them to the next item in the list with a new line, tab, and arrow, okay? So this is what this is doing. And then I go on to build the in-progress piece. You see that the formula doesn't finish? There is a plus button, uh, there is a plus sign over here that then is adding this piece of text, which is this one. I'm not gonna explain it because it's the same as before. And then the same, I'm filtering the task, but, but the status is in progress and I'm sorting them. I'm joining them by the same. Okay, so it's kind of the same, but it's changing the, the filter. And as I showed you before, all these tasks are completely clickable. So this simple example, you can extrapolate to so many other things. You can show here all the information that you want. For example, who is working on what? So instead of the statuses, it will be uh, Daniel is working on this, uh, Peter is working on that, for even next to the task, we could add how long we've been working on it or where the when the task was created, or we can even group the task by created time. Like we can do so many things so we can have an overview of everything that's going on in this case in our projects. So now let's see another example that is also going to introduce us to something new that Notion Formulas has. So let's say that we have a client and the client always pays us at the same time every month and we know when was the first time that he's paid us 
and we want to have a formula always to know when the client is going to pay us next. Like this, we can forecast the cash flow that is going to come into our company. So how am I doing this? With this formula over here. Here, I introduce a new function, which is let. What this does is declaring a variable that then we can reference later in the formula. What do I mean by this? So here I'm using let and I'm creating this variable called date. I can choose whatever, whatever name I want. Then I'm telling the formula what date means or what date is. In this case, I want that date is a date. And this brings us to the second new formula that is also super useful because this is going to allow us to create real date properties from a formula. We have parse date now. So as we can read here, if we pass the parse date function, a string that looks like this, it turns it into a real date output, which we can then filter as a date, not as a string of text. So with this, I'm constructing a date. So how am I doing it? I'm using the now function and dot notation year. So this is giving me the current year. Then I'm adding the hyphen because it is important that it's in this format. And then I'm getting here the month in this way with format date now and in this notation. So I can get it like this. So this is the current month and then another hyphen and then the project start date, but only the days. So in this current scenario, now we are in August 2023. So the output of this will be 2023, because it's the current year, will be 08, which is August, and will be only the date of the start date, which is 7. So it will be August 7, 2023. I mean, cannot. So this is date, okay? Now I'm using the date variable inside of a formula after this comma. So now if the status is that the deal is closed, this doesn't really make sense in this example. Uh, so if now, so the current time is greater than date, than all of this, then what I want to return is date, which is again all of this. So now you're seeing why this is helpful because I'm using date so many times. And if I wouldn't have used the let, I will be writing all this over and over. So yeah, if now is greater than date, then I add one month. And if not, then I just return date. So what am I achieving with this? So I'm just always setting this as the current year and month, and I'm just taking the date into consideration. So if that date in the past, I have to add one month because the person has already paid me this month. And if the date is in the future, I just keep it as is because he still didn't pay me in this month. And this is what we are doing. So now how is this working? If I set this to, I don't know, May 10th. So this September 10th. And if I set it in the future a little bit, so this is today's August 25th on the 30th, then it's August 30th. It doesn't add that extra month. Another example that I love and that it's, it's nothing new, we have already covered it, but it's the, just the styling. Is this formula over here, this basically counting how long I've been working on a task depending on when I started it. And this is the formula over here. It may seem a little bit complicated, but with all these comments, it's quite easy to understand. So what the task is being worked on, I don't need to get into it. But for me, what is cool is just the, the styling. It just gives so much more pleasure to see this uh, with colors. Than, than just with, with simple white text. So so yeah, we can we can also play with the with the styling to make our formulas look so much better. So I know that in formulas, I mean it's it's infinite the amount of things that we can do with them. These have been the two examples with a lot of meat inside of them that I have found the most useful. But now feel free to experiment. See all the formulas that Notion has to offer, read them all and then try to implement them yourself. In the beginning, it took me a little while to really understand them, but once I got them, then I realized how powerful they can be. So that is it for the video, guys, and as always, hasta la próxima.